Welcome to Interviews with Innocence, a podcast about spirituality, consciousness, and exploring the wisdom our children bring into this world. I believe that our very young children are our greatest teachers. After all, they're the masters of living in the present moment, bubbling in unconditional love, enjoying the messiness of life, and curious about the universe in all its dimensions. The pure essence that young children exhibit lives within all of us. My hope is that these interviews will help us discover, embrace, and connect with the sacred core of childhood that resides within each of our hearts. I am your host, Marla Hughes. Today, I am so excited to have Jane Del Piero on the show. Jane is an acupuncturist, nutritionist, sound healer, medicine woman, modern day shaman, healer, ascension facilitator, and soul path transformational guide. That's, that's quite, a, quite a list, Jane. Um, beautiful. A sparkling, vibrant, radiant woman who has worked internationally for over 15 years, enhancing and supporting the healing of the body. Jane helps individuals heal everyday aches and pains while, while facilitating a personal journey of stepping into your power and truth by relinquishing self-doubts, limiting beliefs, and fears. Jane has been called to assist others in their personal, professional, and spiritual advancement and has aligned herself to help others do deep and profound transformational work, working directly with spirit and source energy. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Jane. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you here. So, so wow, you work in so many different areas. And I know that um, if I understand correctly, your life kind of changed after a Kundalini experience in 2012. Is that when, is that when you, you went down this path? Or tell us a little bit about your journey. Um, I've actually been working in acupuncture and herbal medicine for a number of years, I started on that journey in first with herbal medicine in the 90s, and that would just because of um, taking antibiotics for like throat infections or tonsil infections, yes. they never seemed to work. So then I started to be feel pulled towards the herbal medicine. So I first started to study plant medicine and um, botany in Boulder in uh, 1990s and then from there it kind of progressed forward on my journey um the shamanic healing had always been a part of my life because as a child i had taken my mother when i was a young girl to a native american's house that i had met in a past life and so from about six or seven years old i would have dreams about people and tell my mom things so the shamanic aspect had always been there and then the acupuncture came in um, after I'd hurt my ankle and um, I had gone to the doctor and they had set my foot wrong and then they wanted to re-break it to heal it. Ooh. But I saw an acupuncturist in Boulder and he fixed it and that began that journey. Yeah. Wow. Shamanic yeah. healing. It's interesting you bring that up. I'm actually um, doing a plant medicine series right now on my podcast and so, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the Kundalini awakening you had though? Because I've always been really intrigued about Kundalini and can you explain just what happened? What happens? Well, I had a full, a full activation of energy. I was in Costa Rica and a neighbor of mine had built a driveway on my land and then he got very confrontational with me. And when I started to go through that, being in a foreign country, all of a sudden something started activating me and it was 2012. And I later realized that my Venus line um, astrologically crosses right through this area of Costa Rica. So it was like some deep healing for me and um, being awakened into um, my path as a yogini. Right. And because of that activation that took place, all of a sudden I was moved to be um, going to India and I was in Rishikesh, India within a few months studying in an ashram. 
and um, taking yoga classes. And I've been um, on a path of teaching the Kundalini and doing Kundalini yoga every day. Kundalini is the energy that dwells at the base of our spine. And they call it like um, the, the spiritual energy that begins to arise as we enter onto our um, spiritual journeys. And it's when you decide in life that you're walking towards the temple instead of the amusement park. Mm -hmm. And um, that kundalini begins to activate and it crosses through each of the chakras. And then you go through and release traumas, energies, emotions that were stuck in those levels of each chakra. So your first chakra is age one to seven and all the energy stuck there. Your second chakra is, you know, seven to 14 and the energy stuck there. And so you go through this as the opening is happening. And then they say that the energy will shoot straight out your head as you connect into spiritual or source energy. Right. And you become very in tune with, um, what is going on um, externally in the universe and what's going on for you. It's very easy for me to like set boundaries with people and to um, have a practice every day. I, you get very focused on what it is on your path as you're um, moving on, sweeping the path along the way to my um, spiritual temple. Yes, I love that. I love the way you say that. So Kundalini, I was actually supposed to do a really immersive um, workshop with Kundalini, but of course with COVID and everything, it was, it was canceled. It actually wasn't canceled. It went online, but I didn't think I wanted to do Kundalini online. But anyway, so I've always just been really curious about it. If a person wants to, does it take a couple of sessions in order to learn how to do Kundalini? So then you can do it on your, you know, um, do it on your own, just like really a vinyasa flow or something like that. Even well, with Kundalini Yoga, they have something called Kriyas, which are set series of exercises that okay. activate or cleanse a certain area of the body. And so it might take you quite a while to learn that Kriya. What they would tell somebody to do is to do it for 40 days in a row, same practice. And with that, then you would be able to master it. Interesting. And then those 40 days, I'm just really curious about this. I mean, how each session, is it an hour or how long do you usually do your Kundalini for your daily Kundalini? Yeah, my Kundalini in the morning is uh, one hour and I'll start, you start with some very gentle exercises and chant, mm -hmm. start with a chant and then some gentle exercises. And then you get into what they call the Kriya or the set for the day. And then every evening I do, uh, pranayama which is the breathing exercise yes. for yes. 12 minutes while chanting um and then I, after that i do another chant where i hold my hands in the fearless heart mudra and then i chant to durga 108 times and then i go into a meditation so it's you do a morning practice and an evening practice like you start your day and then you cap your day right interesting yeah and what does that it, it's pretty obvious, but wh what does that do for you as a, as a person? How have you changed since you started doing all of this, all of this kind of work? It's been very calming to me. It allows me to witness what is taking place in the world and not be um, fully affected by it. Right. It's like I'm watching a movie and so I can witness the movie, but not have to be fully involved in it unless I choose to be engaged in it. Then I, you know, then I have that exchange. So it teaches me about um, boundaries and what makes me um, feel good, safe, and um, secure in my life. Right. Supported, and what I do every day to, um, as I said, sweep that path towards my temple. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, and teach or help your your clients do do the same correct yes, yes yeah wow that's wonderful so i'm curious about your apprenticeship in shamanism um with the mayan traditional healer and i think it's um miss beatrice wait uh -huh. is that right yeah and so how did that journey come about and tell us a little bit about your work i'm i'm very familiar with shamanism and how you bring that into your practice um, in Telluride. Okay. 
Um, Miss Beatrice Wait, I was going to school in Boulder studying the botany, and a girlfriend of mine had asked me to go to an event with her to talk to, there was a, a, a women's circle, and they were talking with this woman, Miss Beatrice, and they were presenting about mind healing. And so uh, my girlfriend and I went, and while we were sitting there, the whole time, um, Miss Beatrice kept staring at me, and I was felt like, why is she looking at me, you know? <laughs> right. And she had this like beaming smile and just was beaming right at me. And after the class was over, I went to the fence at the edge of the backyard, you know, my teacher's backyard. And she walked over to me as I was, I'm still waiting for my girlfriend to gather her stuff up. She walks over to me and she says, oh, it's nice to see you again. And I said, oh, this is the first time I've ever met you. It's really been a pleasure to sit with you today and experience your healing and you know, an honor to, you know, be in your presence. Right. And she says, um, actually, I've known you, you showed up on my porch, or you showed up outside my yard when you were about six or seven years old. She goes, your spirit outside the yard, running around the fence, playing and playing. <sighs> okay. And then she goes, then you went away for a while. And then she says, you come back when you were about 16. And this time you were inside the yard playing and playing and you were there for a while and then you left and she said then you came back again at 22 and you sat on the porch this time and this was like just weeks before not long before i had met her right and i said no i've never been to belize in my life i've never ever been there but it's awesome to meet you and then she said that i had known her in a past life and that um, we had agreed to come together so she could teach me and help remind me of the things that I had known before. Oh my gosh. Were yeah. you so excited or so confused? Or <laughs> all of it, all of it. And because I had had that happen to me before where teachers have told me I've met you before. Right. Like story with when I was a child and stuff. Um, then it kind of clicks and makes sense, right? But I just jumped at it. I was like, okay, I'm yeah, going to yeah. go for it. And so I did an apprenticeship with her where she was either in Colorado and we would study with her and learn things, or we would go to Belize and study and do things there. Right. So was it wasn't a lot of ritual and ceremony and that sort of, that sort uh -huh. of thing? A yeah. lot of propicias and then a lot of the healing techniques that they did where they take they take the Holy Trinity, they'll take three herbs and they put them in a pattern and we pray into the pulses of people. Mm -hmm. And then you read the pulse and you'll tell what kind of a spiritual injury that person has. If they have sadness or grief or like a trauma, um, sadness, grief, trauma, um, envy or evil eye. Interesting. So they take the plant and they actually, they put it on you, they hold it on you topically? Yeah, on your pulse. Okay. On your pulse. Wow. Interesting. Did you, um, do they do any plant medicine in Belize, like ayahuasca or anything? Yeah. So um, yeah, they do do ayahuasca and stuff there. It's not, they have other plant medicine yeah, yeah. with there that are more specific to that jungle because that jungle is different than if you get into South American jungle. Yes. Yeah. I've done the ceremonies in South America and stuff. It's definitely a different shamanic energy yeah so is the music really important in the is that how you kind of got into the sound healing also because i know that i um worked with the shipibo tribe but they're in peru and the um icaro i can't roll my r's <laughs> yes that's such an important part of the ceremony as is the shaman as uh, you know i'm talking to talking to you who's an expert in this but um is that where the ha sound healing came about or where did where did that come from oh the sound healing um came about when i had had um over the years when i had been doing my work and i was in school in boulder i started to uh, meet a lot of rock bands and work for a lot of rock bands doing healing work and stuff and then i got really into the music industry there and I had a very dear friend of mine who was the lead guitarist for a band called Widespread Panic. And he got... <laughs> <laughs> They've been to tell you right a few times. Yeah. <laughs> he got sick with pancreatic cancer. And when he passed away, I went into acupuncture school 
and it was an acupuncture school that somebody had walked by and handed me a flyer on sound healing, that specific type of sound healing that was into the acupuncture points. So then I was like, well, I love music, and so I want to try this. Right. And that just opened a door where I started going to India and studying and in other places. Yeah. Wow. You have you, I could talk to you forever about all the different things you're doing. So, so tell us uh, when someone in a patient comes into your, to see you, how do you make that decision? Are you going to use sound? I mean, I know a lot of it is really integrated together, but um, how do you sort of assess someone? That it's interesting because the, the guides or the entities that are around that person that are helping assist them on their healing journey will kind of start to tell me what they need. And then I start to question or we have a dialogue about something. And from there it unfolds into what they need. Each time. Right. Do you do acupuncture mostly or it go, it's all across the board. It's all across the board. Yeah. So yesterday, um, let's see, I had a client at the end of my day she came in and she sat and talked for 25 minutes before we did any acupuncture then i did some acupuncture i started doing the sound healing on her but she just talked the whole time we conversed the whole session she didn't have she didn't want me to leave her for five minutes because she was just unloading everything that was going on right, right. interesting so some counseling involved there too yeah and then we did a little shamanic journey with her where she went on a, a, a quest almost and had a, a conversation with somebody that she was having an issue with but with their higher soul right interesting so so do you what is one of your most i don't know favorite would be the word but a story of a client that that you you helped and it was just like an amazing experience for both of you. Can you, I'm sure you have many of those, but. Um, gosh. I didn't fit that in your questions. <laughs> Sorry. I, um, I was actually at a concert one time in New Orleans, seeing widespread panic. And um, there was a group of young men in front of me who were um, very inebriated. And they were picking on one of the boys. And all of a sudden, he wasn't doing well. So um, he sat down on my blanket. And the next thing I know, I just was, I'm talking to him. And I gave him a little bit of rescue remedy. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. And then he totally shifted because they had dosed him with some, some acid that he wasn't aware of. So he was not having a good time. And so I talked to him for a while and just calmed him down and gave him the rescue remedy. And then I did a little like energy work on him, what is known as theta healing. Yes, I'm familiar with it. So I was reformatting his belief system there and helping him change the story that he was getting himself caught in. Right. And within like 20 or 30 minutes, he's up and he's having a great time and he's gone, right? Years later, I'm at a concert and it's, the memorial for a friend of mine from widespread panic who had died. And I'm sitting outside getting ready to go in. And all of a sudden a kid, these three boys are standing across from me and they're like, that's her, that's her. And I'm meanwhile, I'm crying and having this yeah. emotional day. And they're like, go talk to her, go talk to her. And so one of them comes over and they're like, were you in New Orleans at the jazz fest? And oh my panic God. Was playing? And I was like, yeah. And the next thing I know, that kid is standing there in front of me and he's thanking me and telling me he takes rescue remedy to every concert he goes to now, gives it oh to my. Who, take, who do too many drugs or get dosed or anything like that. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Then there was a song that Widespread Panics played called The Blue Indian. And it's about getting the medicine to somebody when they need it. As he turns around to walk away from me, he puts on a full-on Indian headdress that he wore through the whole show. Oh, my gosh. Like, there's the blue Indian. I mean, it was wild. It was yeah. one of the wildest stories. Because yeah. that like, years. But it was the same band. And then boom, he's right there. Right, right. Isn't it interesting how we're so into, you know... Of course, we know it's re signs and synchronicity, but still, it's always so startling when it happens. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's funny how that works. So I know you have created a um, beautiful business in Telluride, and it's called the Love Light. And um, it says on your website, I was reading what modern science proves now about sound, vibration, and matter was very well known to ancient mystics and used by shamans and healers throughout the world. The ancients knew that words, thoughts, and all sorts of sound create vibrational energy that can reach any place in the universe and affect physical matter. And you go on to talk about, you know, the different, the, the gongs, the, the singing bowls, that you know, all the different things that you use. So tell us a little bit about, um, about your business there. Okay, well, in my, I have a sound sanctuary called the San, San Juan Sound Sanctuary. I don't yes. advertise it. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to, I'm sure. <laughs> no, and a lot of people, because I play like, um, I do sound baths for the yoga festival. And yeah. A lot of my clients know the work I do. So it's very like a uh, special group of individuals who are ready to have their vibrations completely shifted and altered. Because when you go through a sound healing, a true sound healing in a sound sanctuary, you'll break down and cry because you have to like unpeel the onion to allow that vibration to get in to change what's been happening at the core level. Right. So the sound sanctuary, um, what I have in my office is I have four planetary gongs. I have Chiron, Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus. And the planetary gongs are made um, based off of the harmonic frequency of the elliptical vibr or elliptical orbit of the planet around the sun. And isn't that theta vibration also when you theta, start looking? Yeah. Or, yeah. Theta. Well, everything in the universe is in a state of vibration. Right. We're either alive or we're not. Yes. That's, so we're vibrating at a certain frequency. And right now in the world, you can feel the frequency shift very easily when you get around anybody. So you can be like, oh, they're having a good day and they're happy and they're not bothered by everything. You can feel that. And then you get around somebody who's not and you can feel that heaviness come in. Right. And so in the sound sanctuary, what happens is when people come in, depending on where they're at, if they're ready for it, then I begin to work with them. And I will play, we'll do a little bit of acupuncture. And then I might start playing some of the um, crystal singing bowls that are in there for them that are um, like based on the chakra that they need. And then I have metal bowls all underneath the bed, Tibetan bowls. Right. I'll play those in a, in a pattern. I also have chimes. They're called planetary chimes. So they're line the back of the room and they're all the planets. So I'll play those and that's like a waving over your body. So you begin to bathe in the sounds on all different levels. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you ever do that with, with young, young kids? Uh-huh. They love Can, it. Yeah. They sleep. A lot of kids will sleep. And if a woman has come in and was pregnant while I was treating her, then if her child comes in or the child comes in that was in utero, they flip out. They, it's all of a sudden like they go into a trance, like a meditation. Right. Because their memory, their DNA, every part of them is remembering it. Yeah, yeah. I have a, a woman coming on the show, and she's a, um, I think she calls herself a baby medium communicator. I guess medium is kind of a communicator, but it's all, it's all about that, you know, and it's all about the soul before, before it comes into this earthly realm. So, so Jane, what do you suggest to people, um, for themselves and also if they, you know, we, my passion is children and how we can really help, help you use some of these modalities or teach some of the, these modalities, even though they're so much closer to the source and they, they're right in, in this, yeah. but what, what can we do to really, you know, get more of what you're talking about into your own life and into a child's life? Well, one of the things since you had said that you were working with plant medicine is that I would tell you to do a, a garden walk with kids in an area where you can show them how to make a salad out of what's outside. 
you know, we, my kids went to the Waldorf school and we did stuff like that a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. And then a lot of people, if they don't know what the safe herbs are, they can go in and Google um, 10 herbs that grow in my community that I can eat. Right. Like, and, greens, and be wise about where you take your kids and show them like off of a trail or off where the dog would be. And it'd be a little bit like, you know, conscious about that. Kids love to learn the things. And if you can tell them about like the magical aspects of the, how the fairies put the medicine in there and stuff, they, yes. do, they thrive on it. Right. And they want to know that too, because they want to know we're, we're sponges. They want to know how to take care of themselves and help other people when they're outside. And so they they're going to feed on it basically. Right. The sound healing a lot. What I'll do is with kids is when they come into my offices, I'll ask them to start to play one of the instruments. And, um, you know, I will um, ask them like what they feel and like what it's doing to them. Does it bring up any emotion? Do they feel a charge in their body somewhere? How are they experiencing it? Um, do they like it? Do they not like that sound? What sounds do they like? Like really question them and then have them talk about like, you know, if they're interested in playing an instrument, what band do they like? Right, right. Music, then they start to feed on it a little bit and they're like, well, what does that do? This, they will get very tranced out by the, the sounds, especially kids with any hyperactivity. Mm -hmm. Calms them down and they're able to focus. Right. So what about... Um any rituals i mean that's that is sort of i guess you could make that into a ritual or a ceremony if um a person wanted to do it at home on their own or really involve the family in it that you think would really benefit them in this in a spiritual way kind of get them more grounded together so one of the things i just had a family from snow mass come in and um they were all telling me about different things that was going on, especially with the COVID craziness and how much right. stress and anxiety with the kids not going back to school. And I said, you know, one of the things, the most, one of the most powerful things I ever learned was when I was in my undergrad of political science, I had wrote, uh, written a paper on Madonna, the Madonnification of humans and how we chop ourselves up and stuff. But then I started to realize, well, what Madonna does when she walks by a mirror every day, she says, I'm beautiful, I'm a goddess, I'm the queen of the world, I'm amazing, people love me, I love myself. And so it became, and in studying with a woman named Amachi, do you know who Amachi is? Mm -hmm. She's a saint from India. So you go to Ama and she does darshan, she hugs people, millions and millions of people all over the planet. But they have an I am meditation there. And so I was doing the I am meditation at Amas and chanting and stuff. And all of a sudden I was like, I am beautiful. I am great. And I came up with this mantra. I'm young. I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I'm talented. I'm sexy. I'm skinny. I'm strong. I'm successful. Yeah. And when I say that, it puts a smile on my face, but it yeah. makes me smile too. Yes. And the thing about that is when I tell people, I'm like, now you do that. And you come up with five words about yourself that are awesome. And then you ask your child to come up with five words about themselves that they know are incredible or yeah. fantastic. I'm smart. I'm athletic. I'm a fantastic, you know, musician. I'm right. kind. I'm compassionate. And then you look at each other in the eye every day and you say that. I, I am this. So they're defining who they are to you. So when they go out into the world, they know who they are. Right. Uh, that, I love that. That's beautiful. And it's fun. Is it, yeah, is Alma the one, the person that she doesn't say anything, she just looks in your eyes and gives you a hug and people she travel? Pants, she goes, mama, 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 ma, ma, and she gives everybody a kiss usually at the end. Uh, people yeah. travel all over the world. To get yes, them. yes, yeah, that's beautiful. Well, um, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Jane. I so appreciate it. I can't wait. I'm going to stop in and like have a session with you when I, I think I'll be back in, in September, hopefully. Um, do you have any words of wisdom or anything you'd like to, to say that I didn't ask you? Um, my words of wisdom for people would be is that your life is a school and the love is the lesson and fall in love with yourself. Once you do the changes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if people want to find out more about you, where where would they do that? 
You can go to um, lovelight.net, L-U-V-L-I-G-H-T dot net. Great. And I'm in, my office is in Telluride, Colorado. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much and um, keep keep up the great work. You're just doing, you're, you're such a light being, doing doing great things. So, so thank you. Thank you for thank that. You. Yes. Many blessings. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening in today. If you want to learn more about the show, you can find us at interviewswithinnocence.com and on Facebook or Instagram at Interviews with Innocence. Please write me a message. Tell me what you liked and let me know what else you would like to hear. I would love to hear from you. And if you liked what you heard, please leave us an iTunes rating and review. It helps other listeners find the show. Thank you.